Hello there and good morning, good morning, good morning. Truly it's good to be here on today, amen. And we're thankful to be able to come and to share with you on this 15th day of March. This is the day that the Lord has made, amen. We're going to rejoice, aren't we? Amen. I said we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Thankful that the Lord woke us up on this morning, has given us a reasonable portion of our health and strength, and so we're just thankful to be able to share with you once again, coming alive from Dominion Tabernacle, taken by Force Ministries here in the city of Rocky Mount. Again, we always, as always, we encourage you to please uh, check us out on Facebook, well, of course, Facebook, but check out our website. Check out our website. We've got some good things happening, some good things going on. And so we want you to share, pass along the word, uh, visit our website, check us out on uh, YouTube. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, listen in on some thought provoking messages also on Instagram and Twitter. So we, we, we try to expand our reach and try to, to go beyond the the four walls and so we invite you to help us to share the information out in the in the marketplace so what i want to do for a few minutes on today is share with you uh, we're going to start in second peter uh, second peter chapter one and we're going to also look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start in 2 Peter verse 1. And I want to read a couple of scriptures out of there as we focus in on our message for today. 2 Peter chapter 1. I'll be reading verse 1. If you have it, say I have it. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it says there, beginning at verse 1, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Jesus and of Jesus our Lord according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain Unto life. Somebody say life. 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 And godliness. Mm -hmm. Through the knowledge of him. That he that have called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. Lust. Again, Verse 3, according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him, the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. So what I want to do on today is to talk for a few minutes uh, from the topic, from the subject on today, the knowledge of escape. Knowledge. So 
We are living in some challenging times, and we've been, we oftentimes say that quite frequently, but I think now more than ever, it is more evident that we are living in uh, challenging times. We're living in times where we really don't know what to expect. We are, as a world, walking in uncharted territory. As a nation, we are walking in uncharted waters that have caused us to reevaluate, to revisit the things that we think uh, brings us uh, joy and gratification and satisfaction. But what we have seen here over the past few weeks is that those things which we think are a must have, those things that uh, seem to be necessities, what we have found out is that we cannot put our hope and our trust in materialistic things or in those things which provide us with a certain level of pleasure, a certain level of comfort, a certain level of recreation, a certain level of, of, of enjoyment. But I think that now we, we're in a time where it's really challenging us to reevaluate uh, what's going on and, and, and what's most important in life. And, and so on today, I want to take a look at this uh, title here, The Knowledge of Escape. Because I think that people are trying to come up with plans and strategies to try to escape the uh, pestilence or the virus that has gripped a country and has gripped a world in a way that has really been unimaginable. Yes. So trying to best figure out the best course of action to keep it from spreading, and to keep the loss of life at a minimum. When you think about the word knowledge, when you think about the word knowledge, uh, knowledge is simply information. Information. And oftentimes when we, when we talk about the word knowledge, there are two other words that we like to, to associate with knowledge. And those two other words are understanding mm -hmm. and wisdom. Right. Okay, so you have knowledge, which is information. Understanding now is the application of knowledge or the application of information. In other words, how do you use the information? How do you use the knowledge? That's where understanding comes in. Okay. Now, when you talk about wisdom, mm -hmm. wisdom represents how, the how. Mm -hmm. The how do you use how do you apply the information or the knowledge that you have? Now, let me let me do a visual of that, okay? Because we say you have knowledge, which is what do we say? Information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then underneath knowledge, you have what? Understanding. Which 
which is simply how you use. It's the use of information. All right? Then thirdly under there, you have what? Wisdom. Wisdom then is simply the what? The how. It's how you use, how you apply the knowledge or the information that you have. Now, I wanted to do a visual of this because I wanted you to visually see which of those components is at the bottom. Wisdom is at the bottom, isn't it? Because wisdom should really be the foundation. <laughs> huh? More specifically, you know, what type of wisdom? Godly wisdom. In other words, God, how do you want me to approach this situation that I'm in? What's the best route of action to take? Lord, I know your word. I have the information. But show me how. What's the best way to utilize the, the knowledge, the information that I have to help me in my current situation? Mm -hmm. Godly wisdom. So now, let's think about that for a minute. What's the best route? What's the best approach? And I'm sure that has been, that has been put on the table here over the past couple of weeks in meeting rooms, in board rooms. I've never seen so many emails through my inbox from companies, yeah. corporations, talking about their approach yeah. Yeah. as to how they are going to best deal with this situation. Yeah. I got the insurance company emailing me. <laughs> Talking about how they are going to best approach this situation that has come upon us. And so, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm a little, I'm a little, it, it, sorry, it's a little concerning that one of the ways that has has has, has been suggested to handle, you know, is to look at shutting things down. If it's a hundred or more, then close it down, shut it down. So, well, schools can close down. But then it, churches are being closed down. place where you're supposed to be able to go in the time of trouble. Closing down. Why? Is it because you have a hundred members or more? Why is the church closing down? What rationale went behind that? I don't know. That's something to think about, though, isn't it? But now look here, look here. Information. 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 Now, the key with knowledge is the reason why you want to obtain knowledge is knowledge is good to have, isn't it? It is. 
Knowledge is good to have. Why is knowledge good to have? Knowledge is good to have because it gives you a certain level of what is called ability. It gives you, knowledge gives you a certain level of flexibility, a certain level of flexibility where you are able to move freely about. What do you mean by that? What I mean by that is when you have knowledge, when you have information, you have a certain level of flexibility to where you're able to accomplish certain things in life, you know? You're not just stuck in a box per se, but you, you have the you 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 look to obtain the knowledge, the information, so that you can operate, so that you can function in life. Hmm? When you have knowledge, when you have information, when you have flexibility, what that suggests, you know, you're able to move freely about. What that means is really. You are not limited. Somebody say limited. limited. You are not limited by external factors. You're not limited by external uh, factors. Well, the challenge is this. The challenge is this. Having the proper knowledge. Having the proper knowledge. Having the proper knowledge starts with godly wisdom. Godly wisdom. Now, see, here's the thing, here's the thing. I, we hope that nothing happens to the technological infrastructure. We hope that there is no type of attack upon our technology. Because technology has become a very crucial part of how we function in life, you know. So, the, the, so, so, what has become, what is becoming common, what I think is interesting is how we had, uh, not too long ago, there was a, a major retail chain uh, that sold a uh, Christian some book supplies and they closed all of their physical stores down. Mm -hmm. So where you used to be you could go physically into the store and look and shop and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. Well they moved all those all of their operations online. Mm -hmm. They encourage you people to go online and, and shop. <laughs> Which is convenient to a certain extent, to a certain degree, because people can stay within the confines of the home. But Lord, help us if you know, something happens to the internet. Something, ha something happens to social media platform. Something happens to our technology. Because right now, you know, because uh, churches, they, they're closing down their physical building and they're relying upon technology. But what if technology fails? Then what's the next step? How is the church going to get the word out if technology shuts down? That's something to think about. You know, bookstores closed their physical building, went online. Now, if this trend that we're in now continues, yeah, it's a temporary suspension, you know, where they're at. But if it's an ongoing thing 
and, and, and going online becomes the norm. And that, that, that's, that's alarming. Because what, we're starting to put all of our eggs in one basket. So just something to think about. Just something, just something to think about. But going back, going back, get back to my point here. So information flexibility gives you the opportunity to move freely about gives you an opportunity to function when you have knowledge. You're able to accomplish do certain things. You're not limited. Here's the thing we want to talk about. You're not, again, you're not limited by external factors. What I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is you acknowledge that the external factors exist, but how do you, what's the best way to cope or what's the best way to deal with them? Well, let's take a look here for a minute. Turn to uh, Romans chapter 5 here. Because see, when you have when you have proper knowledge, when you have proper knowledge, you are not bound by external factors, but rather external factors can really help make you stronger. Obstacles, circumstances, situations, trials and tribulations can make you stronger. Look at look, look for a moment, look in Romans chapter uh, five. What is it? Romans chapter 5. Because in this hour, in the midst of what we're facing externally, the question needs to be, Lord, how, how is this going to make us stronger? How is it going to help be of a help to us? Well, let's see. Therefore, verse 1, therefore being justified by what? Faith. Mm -hmm. If anything, I think what is happening, it should help increase or build upon our what? Faith. faith. Mm -hmm. Listen, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace. Peace. That needs to be a certain level of what? Peace that comes upon you. Not panic, but what? Peace. We have peace with God through who? Jesus Christ, our Lord. Relationship. Relationship. Trials come to only make us what? Stronger. Stronger in our relationship. Stronger in our faith. Yes. Huh? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by what? Faith, faith. into this what? Grace. grace. God's grace. God's grace. We should be living by God's grace. Wherein we do what? Stand. If there's anyone that should comprehend that, it should be the church. Amen. Mm. Amen. Verse 2 again, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope mm -hmm. of the glory of God. And not only so, but what? We but we glory in tribulation. tribulation. Yes, sir. Troubles. Mm. Trials. Adversities. Mm -hmm. All right. Why is that though? Why is that? Knowing. Ah, oh, there's that word. What? Knowing. Knowing. Knowledge. Knowing that what? Tribulation is doing what? Working. Working. Tribulation comes not to just get up. Tribulation is what? It's working. Oh, it's working. <laughs> it's working. Ah, oh, maybe that's why people are running to get toilet paper. Why? Because they're being worked. This trial, this tribulation is what? It's working. 
working on them. Huh? Oh, they got to run. Why? Because it's working on them. It's working on them and they're stockpiling toilet paper and they're stockpiling wipes. Why? Because this trial, this tribulation is running through them. It's a spiritual lesson that's coming through to cleanse them. I don't know why people grab so much toilet paper. Ah, because this tribulation is working. It's working. It's running through them. Tribulation working what? Patience. Ah, I gotta have this. I gotta have that. I gotta have March Madness. I gotta have. I gotta have it. I gotta I spent money, I spent tickets. That which we think we got to have in this hour is being what? Taken away! Knowing that tribulation work is what? Patience. This is coming to what? Teach us something. Amen. Work in patience, and not only patience, but then patience working what? Experience. Experience. Mm. What are we going to take from this experience? What are we going to What are we going to take from it? What are we going to learn from it? Oh, you got student athletes. Who have been denied the opportunity to fulfill their dream to compete on a big stage? How are you going to internalize life when you've been denied something that you've been wanting all along? You've been dreaming about it since you were in middle and elementary school. Ah, it's coming to work us. It's coming up. Hmm. Patience was work experience and experience what? Hope. Somebody say hope. Oh. Hope. And when hope comes, hope comes what? To make us not ashamed. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. What's going on? Tribulation. What's happening here? Learning from these experiences, learning from that which is happening in our life. But here's the thing, though, just because it's happening externally to me, I don't have to be bound by it. Yes, sir. Not bound by it. Because what we have to realize and understand is, is that regardless of what the external factors are, uh -huh. because we have this faith, because we have this patience, because we have this hope, and see, experience, when you have experienced some things, when some things have been subtracted from you, when you hit rock bottom before, that's experience, y'all. When, when, when you have experienced trials, when you have experienced tribulation, when you have experienced trouble on, on some certain level and you bounce back, what that teaches you is that, yeah, my life may be impacted by the external factors, but my life is not bound by them. Bound to the point where I can't do anything. Bound by the point where I can't have flexibility. Bound by the point. And, 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 and what's happening here, what it looks like is, is that the external factor is binding us up. To where we can't do 
what we need to do. But look, but look though, look though, hold on. Paul lets us know in Romans 8, he says, and, for, and we know that what? All things. All things. All things. All things. Work together. Yes. Thank you, Lord. For good to them that what? Love God. To them who are what? Called according to his purpose. Right. But see, not, not everyone has that mindset. Not everyone has that mentality. Not everyone sees it that way. But we as believers, though, we should be able to say that. And not only say that, but we should know that based upon our own life experience. Yeah. Knowledge, 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 knowledge. So, so that takes me to 2 Peter, which is where, where we started. 2 Peter, let's look at that for just a minute here. If we understand that all things work together, Second Peter. Now, I like these. I like these two letters here written by Peter. You know, uh, Peter. His 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 goal here. His goal here is to uh, help the the church to continue to move forward in the midst of external factors. Uh, and and really, in his second letter here, uh, he 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 has we're really. The, the, the first thing he wants the church to be able to do is to, is to grow. Is to grow and to grow, you know, spiritually. And not to be impacted, not to allow itself to be impacted by the external factors that were that that were that were surrounding them during that time. And so he, he opens up here. He said, if grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Through what? Knowledge, somebody say knowledge, through what information? Knowledge of who though? God. He said, look, grace and peace. Be what? In multiply. To multiply something means to what? Increase it, doesn't it? Increase it. He didn't say grace and peace. Peace be what? Subtracted. So don't, we shouldn't lose our, our peace of mind here. While we go, while we deal with this this situation, don't lose your peace of mind. He says, "Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and who of our Lord Jesus, of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power hath what given unto us all for all things He has transferred to us all things that pertain unto what." We have what we need in order to make it. Yes, yes, yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Yes. Huh? Giving us all things. How, how has he transferred those things to us? He said right there, verse three, through the what? Knowledge. Um, Is that what it says in your Bible? Yes. He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life. He has given us peace, which has been multiplied to us through what? Knowledge. He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through what? Knowledge. So, that, so then what that suggests to me then is that if, if that be the case, and I have that knowledge, I have that level of knowledge I have that level of information. Why? Because of my knowledge of him through his son, Jesus Christ, then that, I should have a certain level of what? Flexibility? Loosen up a little bit. Say loosen up. Loosen, loosen up, up. Loosen up. Loosen, loosen up. Loosen up. up. Loosen up a loosen little up. bit. Loosen up. Loosen up a loosen little up. bit. Have a peace of mind. Why? Because I have a certain level of knowledge of him. That have what? Called us to glory and what? Virtue. Now, if that be the case in verses 2 and 3, if I have this certain level of knowledge, I am free to move about.
whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious what promises that by these ye might be partakers of the what divine natures having done what what does it say there in the next word in verse 4 what does it say in your translation and precious promises that by these ye may be partaken of the divine nature, having what? Highlight that. Highlight that. Circle it. Hop, do when you have a certain level of knowledge of who God is, you're not bound by external facts. But rather, there is a certain level of escapability having escaped the corruption that is what? In the world! The knowledge of escape. My knowledge of him communicates to me. Let's me know. Peter says what? Escape the corruption that is in the world. Nothing. Your faith. Your relationship with God. Your trust. It's being tested. It's been tested. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, 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 knowledge. Now, now. We still, you know, we still been, we've been looking at Paul the past couple of weeks and looking at how he's been dealing with uh, his, his opposers and uh, how they've been criticizing him and, and saying all kinds of interesting, interesting, things, interesting things about him. And I, I wanted to revisit for just a minute uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Mm -hmm. Now, and I'm not jumping all about either. But it is but what I but, but what I'm talking about this morning is, is knowledge, information. And when you have a certain level of knowledge, when you have a certain amount of information, there should come a certain level of peace, there should come a certain level of being at ease. Now, 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 look at, look at, look at what uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, really in verse 10, verse 10, when they, when they, remember last week we talked about how Paul, uh, his opponents were talking about his letters, mm -hmm. remember that? And they said, you know, how his letters are weighty and powerful, but when he, when he, when you see him in the, in the, now when you see him in the, when he's present before you, he's weak. And his speech is somewhat common, somewhat plain, somewhat contemptible, they may say in some translations, somewhat uh, simple. And he addresses that more, he, he addresses that in verse 11, in verse 6 of uh, chapter 11, 2 Corinthians, next chapter, chapter 11, verse number 6. He said, now listen, verse 6, he said, I may be plain in my speaking. You see that there? But what does he say next, though? Someone who has uh, NIV, someone who has NIV, what does it say there in verse number six? Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, verse 6, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 6. Even if I am unskilled in speaking, mm -hmm. I am not so in knowledge. I am not so in knowledge. He said, I may be a little unskilled in my speaking. I might not be able to speak as eloquently as my opposers. But he says what? There's nothing wrong with my what? Knowledge. With my knowledge. There's nothing wrong with my knowledge. Keep reading. Indeed, in every way, we have made this plain to you in all things. In every way, Paul says, we have what? Made this what? Plain. plain. Made what plain? Our knowledge. We've tried to make it as plain and as simple as we possibly can. So now what knowledge is Paul talking about? Because he says, there's nothing wrong with my knowledge. There's nothing wrong with my information that I have. What type of knowledge is he talking about? He's talking about his level of experience. What he's gone through. What he's, what he's seen. What he's been up against. As a result of serving the Lord. All right. Now, he, he's transparent with that. Stay in that same chapter, okay? Stay in that same chapter. And over in verse number 21, verse number 21, okay? He says down there, he says down there. He says, I speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak. How be it, whensoever any is bold, he says, I am bold also. Now, what he's saying right there is, you know, he, got, he has all of his, his, his haters, his opposers, speaking of their own accomplishments, speaking of their own uh, things that they have done and they have accomplished. Paul said, well, let me just jump in there as well. Let me talk about a couple of things here. And, 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 his, and, and the thing I want you to see is his nature, how he's talking, what he's saying, it's rooted in his knowledge of who, who God is. So now let's take a look at what he said. He says, are they Hebrews? In other words, his opposers, his opposition, those that are opposing him, they brag about being what? Hebrew. He says, well, verse 20, he says, well, guess, well, I am what? I am Hebrew too. We got something in common. He says, are they what? Israelites. Do they brag or boast about being an Israelite? Well, what? He said, well, so am I. Mm -hmm. Huh? Are they what? Do they boast about being the seed of Abraham? Well, guess what? So am I. Paul says, we got something in common. Right there in verse 22, don't we? Yeah. Now, verse 23. Are they what? Are they ministers of Christ? Mm -hmm. Ah, now that's where the distinction comes in now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's, that's where the, the distinction comes in now. He said, now, he said, now, if I could just talk about that for a minute. He says in verse 23, he says, I am what? More. Hmm. Now, someone may ask, well, Paul, is, he's bragging. He's both. No, no, what he's doing is he's speaking out of what? Knowledge. Because he said, there's nothing wrong with my knowledge. He says, he says, I am more. Now, look at how he talks about the more part. Okay? He says, I am more. Well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that, Paul? He says, in labors, more what? Abundance. I've done more work than my opposition has as it relates to working in the ministry. He says, 
Look what it says next. In what? In stripes. You see that there? Mm -hmm. In beatings, in some translations it may say. He says, in stripes above what? Measure. Which, which means he has been, he has experienced being what? Beaten. For the what? For the ministry of Christ. Huh? Now his opposition can't say that, can they? No, they can't. That, no, they can't say that, can they? Mm -mm, mm -mm. He says, in what? Imprisonment. In prisons, how often? What does it say in verse 23? In prisons, more frequently. You see that there? What does that, what, what is he saying right there? I've been in prison more than one time. Huh? What does it say next in verse 23 out of the NIV? What does it say there? In death. In death? Okay. Often. In near death experiences. Near death experiences. But guess what though? He what? He survived. Now he said in death, but not just one time, but what? Quite a few times. Again and again. He was exposed to what? Yeah. But he what? Escaped. Huh? Of the Jews, he said, verse 25, 4. Look at it. Of the Jews, read it out. What does it say? Verse 24, go ahead. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Beaten! Can his can, can opposer say that? Mm -mm. No, can't say that, can hmm. Verse 25 says what? Three times I was beaten with rods. Three times I was beaten with rods. Three times beaten with rods. Keep going. Once I was pelted with stones. Stone, he said. Stone, beaten, imprisoned. Keep going. Three times I was shipwrecked. Three times he said I was shipwrecked. Look at this man's resume. We don't know what suffering is. Do we do we truly? God has been good to us, y'all. Oh. oh, he's been real good to us. He's been extremely generous. Extremely. Look at this man's resume here. Stone beaten, shipwrecked. What else he said? I spent a night and a day in the open sea. At sea, he said. Keep going, verse 26. I have been constantly on the move. Constantly on the move, he said. Go ahead. I have been in danger from rivers. Danger from rivers? In danger from bandits. Bandits? Run the risk of being robbed? Keep going. In danger from my fellow Jews. Even my own people. In. He's both. He's talking. See, we boast in the wrong thing. See, we, we, we boast in our accomplishments. We boast in how much we have. We boast that, oh, I got, I have a, I have a house on the lake, or I have a, 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 a house up in the, the mountains. Oh, I have a jet, I can just get on and just, I've got this and I, and I've got that. But here recently, it really doesn't matter what you have. <laughs> because it, it, the way that it looks, we, we're boasting in the wrong thing. I heard someone talking. They were saying, well, 
I've got a house out in so and so. I, I'll go out there and be safe from the virus. Kind of, how you gonna how you gonna outrun something you can't see? <laughs> how you gonna say you got this over there and I'll go over there? It can come and it might already be there. You can't see it. But that shows the level of people's thinking. Trying to outrun calamity when Paul here, he's talking about calamity. Talking about calamity. Calamity on top of calamity. Peril almost one experience after the other. And here we are trying to run from How in the world is God going to get glory out of your life if every time you're on the run constantly? Oh How in the world are people going to know that God can heal and God can deliver if, if the place that where you're supposed to go for healing and deliverance has closed their door? What does that communicate to the world? One can chase a two ought to be able to chase ten. If you got a if you got a congregation over a hundred members, that's gonna be some superpower in that church. <laughs> that whatever comes through there, there ought to be enough power, there ought to be enough anointing to shut whatever it is down. But if the door is closed, what direction are we going in? See, I was shipwrecked. My own people turned against me. Keep going. In danger from Gentiles. In danger from Gentiles. Go ahead. In danger in the city. In danger in the city. In danger in the country. Lord have mercy. Y'all, you read it just like I am. Paul said, I was in danger in the city. I was in danger in the country. Where you gonna go and not be in danger? Where you gonna go and... Where you running to? He said, in the country where there is nothing, I was in danger. You empty you out the out of place. Okay, that's fine. But there's still peril all around. So you can go where there are no people and there's still what? That typically that's where the country is out there in the sticks. Well, you can go into the city. Well, guess what? There's what? Trouble there too? Keep reading. In danger at sea. In danger, well, well, we know that cruise industry is, 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 is having a tough time. They ain't the only one. Keep reading. And in danger from false believers. False believers. Keep going. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. Gone without sleep? Keep going. I have known hunger and thirst. I have known hunger and I have known what? Thirst? Yeah, can you can't hear the Paul said it. No, they can't say that. They ain't about that. But Paul, there's nothing wrong with my knowledge. There's nothing wrong with my knowledge. I know. I know where I come. I know what the... Keep going. Keep going. And have gone without food. And have gone without food? Go ahead. I've been cold and naked. I've been cold and what? Naked. Without. Whew. That's a lot. And we running from a cold. We running from a 
sore throat. We running from a cough. Shutting the church down because of a cough. What? What? Come on! Here's a man! And add on that, keep reading. Besides everything else, besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Wow. So on top of all that, he still has to be an apostle and be concerned about who? All the churches. Hmm. Hmm. Verse 30 says what? If I must boast. If I am going to boast. Go ahead. I will boast. I will boast. Go ahead. Of the things that show my weakness. Mm -hmm. In the King James it says, if I must needs glory. Thank you. I will glory of the things which concern my infirmity. Verse 31 says what? The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. I'm telling the truth. Lord knows I ain't lying. He knows. Why? Because the Lord, God knew he was going to go through all that. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, look, uh, turn to Acts for me. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, it talks about Saul's, conver Saul's conversion before he became, before his name was changed to Paul. And, and when the time came for Saul to be converted, he had given him some instructions. Uh, to go into a certain man uh, to receive his, to, to receive further instructions. And I in verse 13, <clears throat> excuse me, Ananias was his name. And, and Ananias answered the Lord said, Lord, listen, I've heard about many of this man named Saul, how much evil he have done by, to the saints at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priest to arrest all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Ananias, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to do what? To bear my name before the Gentiles, huh? And before the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel, for I will shew unto him great things he must what? For his forgotten. So God already knew the dynamics of what Paul was going to go through but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Look at verse 15. Because in verse 15, God, it says, well, for he is a chosen oh. vessel unto me to do what? So if he, that's why God kept him through all those things, because God knew that Paul's assignment was to what? According to verse 15. So Paul said, the Lord knows all that I've been through. I'm back in, I'm back in our second Corinthians 11 now. And then lastly, lastly, he, he, had, he introduced another scenario here. And, you, and it's in Acts 9.24 where uh, they had conspired to arrest him and, and do harm to him. But in verse 33 it says, and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and he, and what? He was able to do what? Escape the hand of uh, his accuser in verse 32. So Paul understood 
if there was anyone that could relate to and had experience in the knowledge of God and understanding what the divine power that Peter spoke of in 2 Peter, if there was anyone who could relate to that and understand what it meant to have the divine power of God working on your side to enable you to escape near death circumstances and situations, Paul could. Thus, it gave him the flexibility to do what? To continue to do what it is, what it was God had called him to do. Even though people didn't like it, he wasn't bound by that. You see what I'm saying? He was still able to do what? Go throughout the region proclaiming the gospel. When you have a certain knowledge of who that, that certain knowledge of who God is, and you understand the power that, that that's there, that enables or should enable you to continue to do what it is you've been called to do. That's the challenge. That's the challenge. And so, not allowing external factors. To overtake you. But continuously leaning on and depending on, on the Lord. And that's the challenge that is before us now. We gotta learn, we gotta lean on him now more than ever. That's the challenge for us. Yes, Lord. There should be a certain level of peace that we have. Certain level of resilience that we have, and 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 continuing to proclaim the name of the Lord as a strong tower because He is. Oh, yes, he, he is. is. He's a mighty God, right. and we have to seek Him now more than ever, yes, Lord. and lean on His yes. word. Father, we thank you on this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for studying your word. I pray, Lord, something was said to, to encourage, something was said to give insight as to the times in which we are living. Father, we, we can't always understand everything. We can't always know what's going to happen next. But, Lord, one thing we do know, and that is you. And our relationship with you helps provide stability in an unstable world. Lord, help us not to draw back, but Lord, help us to stand firm, stand boldly on that foundation, which is your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you now, Lord. We give you glory now, Lord. And we place our, our hand in your hand. Lead us and guide us along this way. Help us, Lord, not to stumble or fall or falter in our faith, but to continually proclaim your name and to continually share with those who do not know the goodness of the Lord. We thank you now and we give you glory in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Listen, if there's one who's not saved today and you heard the word, we don't want to leave without giving you an opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you've heard the word of the Lord and you say, you know what, I don't know who Jesus is. And I, I have no clue. I don't have a relationship with him, but I think it would be a good idea for me to do that. And we want to pray with you at this time. And if you're sincere and if you really truly are serious about having that relationship with him, just say this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I heard your word on today. I'm a sinner. I, I don't know you as my Lord and personal Savior, but I, I believe that you came. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you were buried and I believe that you were raised from the dead and that you live now and forevermore. And I want to receive you into my heart, into my life right now. That I may know you 
that I might have fellowship and relationship with you. Come into my life now, Lord. Make me afresh. Make me anew. Help me, Lord, to walk in a way that is pleasing in your sight. I thank you now, and I give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So listen, I encourage you to find your church home, good Bible teaching church, where you can grow, where you can learn, and invest. And what I mean by that is attend regularly so that you can grow in the things of God. And listen, we thank you for coming, for, for, for tuning in with us. We look forward to seeing you again next time. But as you go throughout this week, walk in the knowledge of who God is and let that be your your comfort. Let that be your peace of mind. Not, not going crazy and not, not knowing what to do, but lean and depend on him. Thank you so much for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.